great joy to see you and to minister to you words of eternal life by the power of the living God. We are involved in a group of studies that are truly exciting. We are involved in a victory series uh, showing you how the church of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, has victory over its greatest enemy who happens to be uh, the devil and, and Satan. We are teaching you out of a, of a large uh, teaching uh, syllabus called Demons and Deliverance, Principalities and Powers. And these are available to, to everyone uh, th that desires them. This is volume one. Uh, volume two deals with the cults and, and uh, how you can destroy them with God's power. Uh, we are dealing uh, directly uh, with the problem of who is the devil, how can he hurt human beings, and how we uh, can overcome him by the power of the Lord. Now, it is, it is true that, that Satan is a dignitary. In the little epistle of Jude, it says that, that Satan quarreled with, 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 with the Michael, the archangel of God, over the body of Moses, and that Michael dare not bring railing accusation against him, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. And, and so if an archangel dare not bring railing accusations against him, uh, he is still a dignitary. And we must come to understand this in order to know how we can deal with the powers of the devil. I have discovered uh, that you can only deal with the devil in truth. That if you say, you go back to hell where you came from. Well, honey, uh, he hasn't been incarcerated yet. He is the prince and the power of the air. And when you say that, you immediately cancel out any effect that you might have because you're dealing in ignorance, you see. And, and he doesn't have to move in ignorance. And also, we have discovered through many years of, of, of studying uh, this subject that uh, when you speak uh, disrespectfully, Oh, yeah, you see, you, you're the devil with, 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 with two horns and a forked tail and, and off the red devil I can. Well, no, he isn't. He is an angel of light. He is a deceiver. Uh, he doesn't come like that. Uh, and so uh, when you, uh, even when you mock him, uh, he doesn't have to obey you. Uh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to move for you. You must come under the anointing of the Holy Spirit under the mighty power of God, and, and, and say, the Lord rebuke thee. By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I resist thee. And when you come in God's way, God's manner, uh, it works. <laughs> it works. It, it really works. It gloriously works. Uh, you are not to be defeated. The great men of the world have known this. Uh, uh, the great missionary uh, Judson, he, he knew it. And uh, what a mighty person uh, uh, he was. Hudson Taylor, they said that they nicknamed him in China, uh, the devil caster outer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Martin Luther became so angry at sin and Satan that he took his inkwell and threw it in, in his own office at him, you see. And uh, Billy Graham said uh, recently that uh, I was writing this sermon against the devil and everything went lost. The typewriter wouldn't work. I lost my notes. And, and he, he said, finally, I just resisted the devil. And so it does not, uh, you know, a, a matter of this thing was one time, a long time ago. And this is the battle for today. But the happy thing about it is you're a winner <laughs> and not a loser. And how glad we are for that. We are at lesson 14 in our teaching uh, of this lesson here. In your syllabus, it will be called Lesson 9, because in some of the lessons it took us two sessions in order to cover it adequately. But we are, we have, this is our 14th lesson, and the title of it is The Christian's Authority Over, Over Demons. I, I particularly want this to get right down deep inside of you. Uh, I don't know who caused it and who's to blame for it, but millions of Americans are afraid of the devil. I mean, Christian Americans are afraid of the devil. And you talk about him and they tremble. <laughs> I made a film about a girl in the Philippines that disappeared. And there were people that were fine Christians that wouldn't even go and see it. 
And I said, that's, that, that, I mean, they told me they wouldn't go see it. I said, that's strange. You won't even join the victor parade. The battle's already won. Uh, completed, finished. And, and, and here's just showing you what God did. And you were afraid of the victor parade. I said, you're mighty brave. Even afraid of a victor parade. After the enemy is defeated, you're still afraid. I tell you, the devil's a mean devil. And he's a lying devil. If you don't learn that pretty early, uh, he'll gain victories that he should never gain in, in your life. You are a conqueror. You have the victory. Get on with the job. Let's get it done. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, you discover that humanity, uh, through Adam, was created to have dominion. That you were not created to be a servant, to be a slave, to be under anyone else. You are the apex of all the magnificent creation of God. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, he had made the mountains, and he had made the angels, and he had made the stars, and he had made the sea, and all oh, the creation was so tremendous. And now he says, let's do something after our own selves. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? In our own image. And then he didn't want you to miss it, so he says, after our likeness. Now, there's a lot of the theology in there. An image is a thing of, 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 of like size, you know. An image is something like something else. And so, an image and likeness meant the features were the same and the size and all were the same in our image and in our likeness. So, if you want to see how big God is, look at a man and, and, and you will see it. And then God says further here, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle over all the earth, and every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Let them have dominion. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. You see, God was so afraid that you may not quite understand it that he said it twice. He said it twice in these two verses, that God created man and woman in his own image. And then he says, in the image of God, so you know what he was talking about. And he said, in our image and after our likeness. And he said, they have dominion over everything that creepeth, everything that moves. A man has dominion over it. Now, we ought to say dominion. <laughs> Glory be to God, dominion. God created man to be a king and a woman to be a queen. Uh, you were not created to be slaves. And when you're a slave to nicotine, when you're a slave to alcohol, when you're a slave to drugs, when you're a slave to, to, to sex, when you're a slave to any of these things, you are not what God created you to be. He created you to be a master and not a slave. <laughs> yeah. And these enslaving things do not come from God. They come from the other source. So uh, man, after God had made him to have such strength and dominion and, and power, we just discover in the word of the Lord that he lost this dominion. Not only do you discover that in Genesis, you discover it in Psalm. One of the greatest Psalms uh, is Psalm 8. Uh, you ought to, uh, to read Psalm 8, especially verses 5 to 8, and in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 6 and 8. Uh, man yielded his position. A man yielded his power. Man yielded his authority. Man yielded his dominion to, to, to Satan. He gave it to him. God had nothing to do with it. God gave him dominion over everything that moves. Satan took it away from him. And he says, I have the dominion. I am the king of this world now. I, I am the ruler of this world now. And you look through the Bible and see where he, 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 he makes claims uh, for those things. It's because he stole it off of Adam who did not cling to the word. Better say the word. He, he didn't cling to the word. God has spoken the word. Don't do it. And he did it. And, and when he did not cling to the word, he became a fallen creature. Now, the Christian's authority over demons means this, that the Lord Jesus Christ has redeemed man from the bondage of sin. In John 8 and 32 to 36, you discover whom the Son sets free is free indeed, you see. And so God uh, and Christ have redeemed humanity from this bondage of evil and from this slavery 
that they degenerated into because they had lost their dominion that they had in their creation time. Christ redeems man from this bondage and sets him free. And then he speaks to his church. Uh, Christians are related to the church. He, he speaks to his, his glorious church. Uh, <laughs> in the last words he ever spoke in the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ, the last words he ever spoke, he said, go into all the world. Uh, talking to small people like us. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Imagine that. Imagine that. They that believe and are baptized shall be saved. Uh, when are you saved? When you believe. Uh, you're not saved later. Uh, so many people that claim to be Christians, they don't even know whether they're saved or not. When you believe, you're saved. They that believe are saved. And they that believe not, what does it say? Uh, they're damned. They, they are damned. And then he said, they that have faith shall cast out devils. <laughs> you have authority. You have power. You have that pristine authority that went back to the garden of God, uh, to the garden of Eden, when God gave man his, his primal authority, that you are the king of the earth, that you are the leader of the creation, and that you are the boss down here. Get on with the job. <laughs> and he lost that position through rebellion, through transgression, uh, through uh, listening to the long, wrong voice and listening to the devil and not to God. But Jesus reinstates man and gives the royal command, the royal command. And this was the last command he ever gave on the face of this earth. Immediately he was taken up into heaven when he had given this command. And so it still stands right now that the Christian has authority over demons because Jesus said so. In the next book of the Bible, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, uh, the, the Lord Jesus uh, speaks to his disciples and says, Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both, you better put a circle there, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Ah, that means man was to get back the whole world again. <laughs> the Christians were to get the whole world back that the whole world belong, belong to you. You got it? He didn't say stay in Jerusalem until everybody there is a believer. He said both. We, we don't stay in one city until everybody believes or you'd die there. There are people that are determined to go to hell. They don't want to see it any other way. And so you, you just give them the good news, and if they refuse it, then they're responsible. They're totally responsible for it. And so he said to his disciples, now listen, ye are my witnesses when I give you my power. And so he gave them back the dominion that they lost in the Garden of Eden and said, now go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of this earth. <laughs> and, and, and he told them what would happen. When they preached the gospel, some would be saved, some would refuse it, and they would be lost, and they would cast out devils, and they would heal the sick. Oh, thank God. He gave strength and glory to his triumphant church. In, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, he said, And the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. Hey, that's getting back there, isn't it? Getting back to the authority that was lost. Getting back to the freedom that they once had before they became encumbered with the lies and the deceits of Satan. Can you see our picture today? So many, so many people are so in bondage, and uh, even church people. Some of them are in bondage to fear. Uh, some are in, in bondage to unbelief. Uh, some in bondage to dreadful sicknesses, in, in bondage. And the Lord Jesus is speaking to his church and saying it's now time for you to be free. Christ has a message of authority over demons and disease or anything else. His glorious church has been given this, and he urges you uh, to accept it and to walk in it and to enjoy it in Jesus' name. And in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10, it says, as you have received the gift, so give it. You know, uh, I don't understand uh, why you can be so wonderfully saved and you don't ever tell your neighbor about it. You're saved from hell and you don't tell your neighbor about it. <laughs> I don't understand it. How you can work with a person in the office and they don't know you're saved. How you can work with a person in the shop and they don't know you're saved. I met a revolutionary uh, down in... Venezuela, South America a few years ago, and uh, 
<laughs> he had been up to New York City. He had to run for his life out of Venezuela because of revolution. And one day, sad and dejected and broke, he, he dropped into uh, the, uh, a, a New York uh, gospel preaching station uh, that was for the down and outers, uh, a, a, res a rescue mission. And there, they, before feeding him, they gave him the Word of God, and, he, and they gave him a Bible, and he began to read it. And, and, and uh, he gave his heart to Jesus. Uh, when he came back to, to Venezuela, he discovered that for a number of years, he had lived next door to a missionary. Now, he told me this in front of the missionary. And then he looked up at him and said, why didn't you evangelize me? That's, that, that's the way he said it. Why didn't you evangelize me? Uh, why would I have to go all the way to New York and go through all the suffering that I went through and you didn't evangelize me? says, you live next door to me, and you never told me about the experience that I found in New York City in a rescue mission. He says, why didn't you evangelize me? Friends, the Christian has authority, has authority, has authority to speak the Word of God and to cause men to submit to the Word of God. If you don't use it, then, then, then you'll have to one day give an account to God. He said, as you have received the gift, so give it. Every generation, including us today, have a divine command to give and to give and to give and to give, not to keep and to keep and to keep. <laughs> no, no, but to give and to give. First Peter 4 and 10 is, is the word. Uh, as you have received the gift, so give it. And God is expecting you and God is expecting me uh, that we shall return the gift, and tell everybody about it, and let them know the power of God as we have done it. Now, the Christian authority will be challenged. I mean, we still have a devil. And in this moment that we live now, which is the most dramatic moment since the Lord Jesus went back to heaven, this is the most exciting time the world has ever known up until this moment. And you want to know something? You may think everything's bad. Did you know God is doing more right now than I've ever known of Him doing in my lifetime? God is saving more people right now. Did you know that in South Korea, they have one church with 250,000 members? Did you know that in South Africa, they have just built the largest, the largest tent in the history of the world, seating 34,000 human beings? Did you know that right now, there's revival in certain areas of the world where tens of thousands are receiving Christ as their Savior? <laughs> you better look up. You better get out of the ditch where you can look up a little higher and discover God is real. God is doing things. God is moving. This is the day of God's blessing. But the church will be challenged. The devil wishes to challenge the church. If he can find your weak spot, he'll move in on your weakness. But you must remain in the strength. In 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4 and verse 1, it says the Spirit, if you will notice, it is with a capital S, which means the Holy Spirit, that he speaks expressly expressly, you know, with emphasis, with strength, with power, you know, he speaks expressly. What about in the latter times? Now, if there ever going to be any there right now, in the latter times, he says, some shall depart. Some shall depart from what? <laughs> the faith. Now, the faith is all wrapped up in the Bible. Believe in the Word of God is your faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of the Lord. And so this is an attack upon God's eternal truth, upon God's Word. That was a problem in the Garden of Eden. Eve did not believe God's Word. Adam did not believe, oh, God won't do that. That's what Satan told him. You won't surely die. <laughs> when you don't believe God's Word, you're in for trouble. The world is in for trouble when it won't believe the Word of God. And you better understand it. You better understand it. He said, they shall depart from the faith. What is that? Believing God, trusting God, loving God, serving God. They shall depart from it. They're not going to just be backsliders. No. We're going to be challenged. You say, by what? By the cults? They shall be, they shall depart from the faith, giving heed, listening to, believing in, accepting. What? seducing spirits and, and doctrines of devils. Now, I, I, I don't want you to get afraid and run off somewhere. The battle of the future is not over doctrines. <laughs> not over doctrines. The battle of the future is doctrines 
of devils in relationship to the Word of God. Is the Bible true or not true? We're going to have to stop fighting one another and start fighting the devil. We're going to have to get our aim right and aim at the right one. He said that in these last days, there would be the authority of the Christian challenged. And I want to tell you right now, there are just millions of Christians that won't even answer the devil back. They won't even fight back. They won't do anything. Uh, uh, something can happen to one of their members in their church, and, and they'll send him off to the insane asylum, send him into the devil's pit, rather than setting him free by God's mighty power. I was speaking in Wisconsin at a, at a, at a men's uh, meeting, and when I was through, uh, uh, a Lutheran pastor walked right straight down the middle aisle crying. He said, I put two of my members in the insane asylum and said, from what you've said this morning, I'm going to go get them out. I prayed over him. I said, just let me know about it, please. A couple of weeks later, got a telephone call. He said, Brother Sumrall, they're both out and they're both home. He says, I went up there, cast the devil out of them and brought them home and says, they're both all right. There's a battle. What are you going to do? You're going to be like that Lutheran pastor and say, hey, hey, hey. I'm on God's side, and I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. And then you're going to win the battle. But if you're going to take the negative side and the side of unbelief and the side, and the side of fear, then you will be destroyed. He says, The Spirit speaketh that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. They will give heed to the seducing spirits, lying spirits, and doctrines of devils, saying God isn't right, God isn't true, uh, morals uh, are no good, uh, you, you know, and, and say that the whole thing of God is not true. I want to assure you one thing, that those things are from hell and, and that you must believe the truth in order to be, set, to be set free. So, the Christian authority is that we resist. You say, now how do we resist? Uh, we discover in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, where God speaks to us, the Holy Spirit speaks to us and says, Now, be, be sober. And as I've told you before, now this does not, is not speaking of alcoholic beverage. No, it is not. It is, it is speaking of a, of a stupid, giddy world. We are living in the world of amusement. And you know what the word means from the Greek, don't you? The A means no or not. Muse means to think. And amusement means not to think, you see. And that's the world that we live in today. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, we have an adversary. It's not your neighbor. It's not your wife. It's not your husband. It, the Bible says it is the devil. That he will go about as a roaring lion. It means he'll come screaming and yelling and overpowering and, you know, acting as if he's big, seeking whom he may devour. It says, resist steadfast in the faith. Now, you can't resist any other way. Resist steadfast in the faith, knowing the same affliction are accompanied in your brethren or in the world. That we've always had the same battle. Uh, from Daniel, the same battle. Uh, from Joseph, the same battle. Peter and John, the same battle. And, and, and so, uh, we must do that. James says it uh, in a very strong way. He says, submit yourselves, therefore, this is in James 4 and 7. Submit yourselves to God and resist the devil, and he will flee uh, from you. How, 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 how we are glad that we know that and, and how we can do it. And we must do it in Jesus' name and by his power. I want to tell you something that you must know, and that is that sinners cannot exercise demon spirits. Now, they absolutely cannot. Uh, you read in God's Word in Acts chapter 19, beginning in verse 11, and you have Discover there that there were, there, there were certain men uh, who were seven sons of a, of a Jew named Sceva and, and uh, was one of the chief priests. And uh, they, they came to exercise a spirit and say, come out of him. And the spirit said, now we know Jesus and we know you but, and we know Paul, but we don't know you. And those evil spirits jumped upon those men beat them almost to death. They fled out of the house naked, the Bible says, and wounded by demon spirits. Now, you, you have to be a born-again person. You, you, you have to know what God is doing in order to be part of it. So I urge you to realize that if we're sinners, uh, that we cannot exercise evil spirits uh, from anybody, uh, that we have to have a direct and strong relationship with God in order that we can set uh, multitudes free. 
So we are studying in this lesson in relation to the church of Jesus Christ, dominant and powerful with authority and with strength and with victory until the Lord Jesus returns back again. Be part of that victorious and triumphant church in Jesus' name. And one of the pertinent truths for this moment, for this time in history, the time has now come for this truth to be fully exposed and brought into pure focus that we can see clearly that our battle is not with flesh and blood. It is with principalities and powers of darkness that we might overcome them. 